Good afternoon and thank you all for joining us today as we take a look at the woodworking CAD and CAM solution for SOLIDWORKS called SWOOD. As usual, we will save a few minutes at the end of our session for a question and answer period. So as we go along, go ahead and type those questions into the question box on the GoToWebinar panel and we'll do our best to get to them all at the end. If any questions do arise after we wrap up here today, feel free to respond to the email that you'll receive from us with today's recording or you can always reach out to your account manager directly. Okay, without further ado, I will pass things over to Chris to get us started. Thanks, Jessica. Can you all hear me okay? Great. Yep. Yeah. Well, happy Friday, everybody. My name is Chris Watkinson, and I'm uh, Vice President of Sales at CAD Micro Solutions. Um, this uh, presentation is going to be about a half an hour, and I'm joined by my colleagues from CAD Micro Solutions, Harpreet and Kirsten. Harpreet is our SWOOD design application engineer, and Kirsten is our digital manufacturing manager. Uh, so after I do a, a brief intro, Harpreet's going to go through a very high uh, level overview of the design process using SWOOD, and Kirsten is going to show us some nesting and some uh, CNC machining, specifically for the wood industry. CAD Microsolutions is a 3D innovation company. We uh, help our customers with 3D design software, simulation, 3D experiences like augmented and virtual reality, manufacturing uh, software like SWOOD that we're gonna show you today, and CNC milling applications, data management applications, and inspection and 3D scanning and metrology. All of the solutions that we uh, deliver, we, we, they have one thing in common, that they should be easy to use, easy to implement, powerful but yet affordable for all companies in Canada. The, the demo, again, is not a full uh, SWID design uh, and SWID cam and SWID cam nesting. It's supposed to give you a high-end overview so that we can share a little bit of special pricing information that we have for June. SWID is brought to you by a company from uh, look that's headquartered in France called Epicad, and they've been specialists in writing woodworking specific software since 1989 so uh, over 30 years of experience and the, the the tool that we're going to show you today is built on the solidworks ecosystem and it turns solidworks from a general 3d cad mechanical engineering tool into a industry specific woodworking ecosystem the ecosystem has design manufacturing and uh, material processing capability embedded within it. So I'm going to turn it over to Harpreet now, who's going to show you uh, how uh, SWOOD works inside of SOLIDWORKS and give you that overview of SWOOD uh, design. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Chris. Just to confirm, can you see my screen? Yep, looks good, and I can hear you loud and clear, Harpreet. Awesome, that's great. So uh, SWOOD, essentially, uh, the design software, it's embedded right within SOLIDWORKS, so you, can, you will be working within a familiar environment. It comes with a plethora of uh, library components that can be used to cre create your final product, and we'll be going through that process here. So the library is available here, and the rest of the uh, the uh, rest of the commands are available here. So let's get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and first add some panels to my device. I'm going to go ahead and add my top panel, and we don't necessarily worry we we don't necessarily have to worry about the dimensions yet because it's a parametric. We can change all of that later. So I'm gonna add my dimension here, move it up a little bit. I'm gonna add my left panel and apply the mates here and here, completely fix it. I'm gonna do the same process for the right one. First, we're gonna mate it to the top and then mate it to the bottom. Then we're gonna press the button C and it's fully defined. And now I'm gonna click OK and SWOOD will do the calculations and add all of those uh, panels at once. So now that my panels have been added, I'm going to go ahead and add some connectors to it. So I'm going to click on insert connectors, choose the interferences where the connectors can be added. So we're going to add the connectors here and this connector that I'm going to add, I'm going to pick the one that is a combination of cam and dowel pins. So we're going to add one here first. I'm going to go a little closer to it to see its orientation. I'm going to reverse it and I'm going to reverse this one as well so it has the correct orientation and then my my connectors get added on this side now I'm going to similarly add to the other side as well 
and for this one i don't necessarily have to worry about my orientation i'm also going to change my offset a little bit so that the double pins are a little bit inside and i'm going to click ok and my uh, and my connectors have been added i'm going to click ok again and all of my connectors will be added in a moment once the switch completes its calculation. Uh, here, my dial pins are coming outside a little bit, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make those changes and move them inside. And as I move them, the switch will also actually move the holes as well along with it and also on the top. So now that I have made these changes, let's go ahead and move on to the next process. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the legs to this cabinet. So I'm going to pick one of my smart assemblies from my library. I'm going to drop it here. And so it's going to automatically calculate the bounding volume and add the dimensions to it. So now I'm going to go ahead and change some of the properties here. I'm going to embed the machining process here as well so that it performs and adds a hole here. So the hole will be added to the panel now and we can see it by going here as well. As you can see, a hole has been added. So that's the power of SWIFT that it along with everything, it adds the machining process as well. So now let's go ahead and add a grooved uh, back shelf, uh, back, uh, back panel between the gables. So I'm gonna choose one of my other smart assemblies and I'm just going to drag and drop like I did previously. And again, so it is going to do all the calculations and add the panel as I have, as it, uh, you know, based on the volume that was that it was dropped on so now that the uh, back panel has been added i'm going to go ahead and add the uh, one of the fronts and it's going to be an overlay front and again drag and drop and the overlay front gets added uh, it's just too much of an overlay so i'm going to go ahead and change it by going into the properties of my smart assemblies and keep in mind this uh, this interface that I'm working with, it's fully configurable. That's one of the beauties of, of the SWIT design. So now this is, uh, this is configured. Now we're gonna go ahead and add my hinges so that my cabinet can open up as well. So I'm going to hide my panel that I just added now. And I'm going to go to my library and bring up my hinge and the hinge is going to get added. And then once it gets added, it's going to show me my properties on the left side. If I want, I can choose the configuration, but everything looks okay for now. So I'm just gonna press okay. So this is done. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the panel that I had previously added. And now we're going to go ahead and add a handle on top of this. So I'm gonna choose this. And this is the handle I'm gonna choose, and I'm just going to drag and drop on top of it. And again, as soon as the handle gets added, it will be displayed here, and I'm going to change its properties because that's not how I want it to be. I want it to look as in a vertical configuration, and I also wanted to move it a little bit to the right, and at a distance of, let's say, 50, uh, maybe 75 millimeters. Also, I'm going to choose the option to drill holes in it as well. Uh, another thing I want is I want to move it a little outside because as you can see it's embedded in there. So I'm going to click this button so it comes out and it creates the holes as well. And once that is done, it adds a hole and my assembly is complete. Uh, once the assembly is complete, I'm going to go ahead and apply my materials as well. So it allows you to quickly uh, manage all your project materials uh, by using this option. I'm going to choose one of my uh, material from my SWOT library, and I'm going to apply to all the panels that are available here. Once that is done, I'm going to click OK, and let's actually see if I hide this, then what do we see here? Again, it has created the holes as we had previously talked about, so everything from the machining operations are taken care of as well. Now, let's suppose that, you know, all of a sudden, once I created the uh, the cabinet, I received a message that this is not the dimensions we are working with, we want a different dimension. Then being working in a SWIT environment, everything is parametric and you can quickly change the dimensions as you please. So I'm gonna change, let's say, width through 1200 millimeters and height to 1000 millimeters and I enter it and 
everything will get automatically scaled as I added. And this has a lot of benefit uh, downstream in the, uh, in the product uh, manufacturing process as well. And now if I want, I can also export a report as well, which I'm gonna do it by clicking on Sewer Design Report. And it will perform all the calculation on the stock required and everything else and process a document based on the configuration that's defined in the back end. And it's going to then export all the documents. So right now it's going through the process. Let's just wait for a little bit. Okay, so the assembly has been exported and these are the documents that were added. And the main thing I wanna want you to look at is the web report. So the web report export all the hardware stock material required, and then it can be shared with your uh, manufacturing team who can further work on it. So now I'm gonna hand it over to Kirsten who is going to take you through the process uh, related to the manufacturing and nesting of these files. Awesome, thank you so much, Harpreet. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Ah, uh, thanks, Jess. Yeah, okay. That was a good job, Harpreet, well done. Yeah, awesome job, Harpreet. Thank you. So now I'm, now I'm gonna take you guys through this WoodCam nesting module. So all within this assembly environment, I'm gonna navigate to the top under tools, I'm gonna to go to SWDCAM and I'm gonna select nesting. I'm gonna add this active assembly. And now we've opened up into our SWDCAM nesting window. So a lot of stuff going on here. On the left-hand side, I can see my source file. So at any point, I can actually add additional source files to this nest if I want. We see our assembly with all of our parts listed below. And the parts represented in yellow are active for this nest, and those grayed out will, are disabled currently. But I can right click to enable or disable any part as I need to. Next, I'm gonna see parts for nesting. This is gonna give me an overview of all of the active parts right now that will add into this nest, demonstrated in black. I can also see my material and my thicknesses for each part as well. If I expand this parts for nesting, I can scroll through and see a visual overview of each part and I can get my dimensions as well. Down at the bottom, I can see boards. So SWDCAM has actually pulled two boards, beach, thickness of 19 millimeters, and generic six, thickness of six millimeters. And these two sheets are gonna be appropriate for us to use with the parts that we currently have to nest. If I navigate up to my new nesting assembly, I'm just gonna make a couple quick changes to my nest parameter before I go ahead and preview it for you guys. I'm gonna select rectangular nesting. That's gonna assure that SWDCAM nests these parts in uh, as, as close to a rectangular configuration as possible. This is gonna give me a good utilization of uh, a good yield for any of my scrap material that's left over. I'm also gonna bump up the offset distance between my parts. That distance is not only my tool diameter, but an additional distance as well that I can add in. And I'm adding this because I'm gonna be using some aggregates. So I wanna give a little bit more space to my program. Um, everything else looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually preview this nest now. So at the top left, I can click my rebuild button. And now under nesting results, I can see that I have two sheets. Uh, in the top right, I can see the quantity required for each sheet. I can also see the parts that I intended to nest up top here and the parts that were nested. So it gives me a nice quick visual to make sure I didn't have anything left out. Uh, I wanna show you also that SWDCAM nesting has a really quick and easy manual nesting option. So this is nice if I wanna do an automatic nest first and then maybe come back in and just tweak the location of some of these parts. I can also reorder my machining operations and I can add in some attachment tabs. So all I have to do is just click and it's gonna add in some tabs that are gonna appear once I generate a contour mill operation. So I really like that option, it's very handy. But for now, we're gonna stick with our automatic nest. So I'm gonna exit out of here, and I'm just gonna click this bottom right green check mark to activate. So now SWDCAM has opened up my nest into a new SolidWorks assembly. I can see on my left-hand side that I have a SWDCAM tab in my feature tree, 
and I have sheet one, I can see my sheet origin in the, in the lower left corner. I can see a nice visual of my stock as well. And if I double click, I'm gonna access sheet two as well. So for now, we'll just focus on sheet one and programming sheet one. Now, the first thing I wanna do before I start adding tool paths is I just wanna drag and drop a couple tools into this program. So in my task plane, I can see I have this SWDCAM library. There's three tabs at the top, and the first is my tools, all the tools that I have for my shop, and I can break those up into individual libraries as well. The next tab is gonna be all of my aggregates. Now this includes drilling blocks and saw aggregates. And the last tab is this machining's library. Machining is essentially a tool path that has been saved out. And what's encoded in this machining is the selection. So whether it was an auto tool path or you selected a particular face or edge or sketch, it's gonna save the tool and it's also gonna save the operation parameters as well. Uh, it's a really nice feature of SWDCAM for me to be able to save these machining strategies because then when I go to program future parts and assemblies, I can just drag and drop and it's going to save all of my best machining practices. So for now, I'll navigate back to the tool tab and I'm going to throw in, I'm going to uh, drag in uh, an end mill, diameter 18. I also want to add a drill block. So I'm going to choose BP SWD2. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some drilling tool paths. So instead of selecting any holes, I'm gonna go ahead and just select drilling from my SWD cam tab in my command manager. Now this is gonna allow me to select that drill block that I just brought in, and it's gonna show me all of the available operations. I'm gonna select drill. I'll add that into my program. Now, SWDCAM has just analyzed all of my parts and it's pulled all of the holes that it found and applied drilling operations with every, with every applicable drill bit in this drill block. I can see them highlighted from below as well. I also have an opportunity to add a bottom exceeding amount and I can change my tool dive types as well. I'll press OK to validate this operation. And the next thing I want to do is I want to focus on cutting these grooves. So once again, I'm not gonna select anything in my program. I'm actually gonna go up to the command manager and click auto groove. This is gonna give me access to auto groove X. Now this is one of those machining library items that I was talking about. I'm gonna insert that and I can see here that it's pulled T180, which is my saw X aggregate. I'll validate that program. Now I can see I've got some saw cuts I've also got some drill holes too. I'll just scroll in so you can see those represented by those red lines. The last thing I wanna add into this program is all of my contour operations. So once again, without selection, I'm gonna click outline. It's gonna allow me to select that, that end mill that I dragged into my program. Once again, all of the available machining operations appear and I'm gonna click contour and then select add. So here I can select my lead in and my lead outs. I can choose an individual method for each if I prefer. I also have my tool diving operations. I can change my Z security value, my approach value. All I'm gonna do is update my max depth of pass. I'll keep my bottom exceeding as two mil. I could choose to add in some extra thickness laterally, but I won't for this operation. Um, and one other thing to point out before we get down to the bottom graphic area, I can choose between inner and outer contours. So I can, on these parts, I don't happen to have any inner contours, but if I did, I could choose to mill only those or only my outside contours or both. In the bottom here, I can change my approach point by just clicking and selecting any new area that I want. I can also use the slide wheel, which is really helpful, and I can cycle through the different line segments as well. I'm just gonna update a couple of these approach points. And now I'm gonna be ready to validate this toolpath. So I'll press okay. We've got our contour. We can see our lead in, lead out. I'm gonna drag this tool to the bottom of my program because I want my contour operation to go last. And we've got our drills and we've got our cut grooves. 
Before I simulate this program for you guys, I just want to make one slight change so that I don't gouge this panel with this sawing operation. I'll just right click my cut groove, select edit, and I'm going to add in a negative approach value. We should be good now. So let's do a simulation. From the top, I'll right click. I'll actually click from here. So simulate at the top. This is gonna start with my drilling aggregate. I'll speed things up a little bit. And then I'm gonna cycle through to my saw cuts. And I can choose to have a zigzag operation or a zig operation for these saw cuts as well. Lastly, I'm gonna cycle through to my contour operations. Okay, everything's looking pretty good. So before I post this program, what about design changes? Um, SWID CAM machining operations are linked with geometric entities right inside our part. So if there is a design change made to any of these panels, all I have to do is click this rebuild button here, and then those design changes will be applied to all of my existing toolpaths. So the next thing I'll do before I post this program is I'm just going to save it quickly. <clears throat> I'm just going to post sheet one for now. So I'll right click sheet one and I'll select encode. And there it is. There's all my G code that's ready to hit my machine. So that was pretty awesome. In a few short minutes, I took an assembly, I nested it, I added in some auto tool paths, and here we are. I've simulated and now I'm right to the code. Uh, that brings me to the end of my presentation. So thank you guys very much for watching. Well done, Kirsten. That's great. Thank you. So what we just saw, can any everybody see my screen? Yep, looks good. Yep. Is that if you're using a standard process where you have a, a CAD solution and then you're creating a whole bunch of different files to process that for woodworking, you end up with um, a lot of different documents and none of them are up to date or linked with one another so that if there's any change on the CAD side, you have to go and update a whole bunch of different systems, right? Several stakeholders with several files. With the SWID process built on top of the SOLIDWORKS ecosystem is that your entire design environment of SOLIDWORKS parts and assemblies is intimately and parametrically linked, parametrically linked to your process planning with SWID CAM, all within those same SOLIDWORKS files, the parts and assemblies. You have a full reporting module, again, parametrically linked, connected to CNC, material management, and documents for your workshop. So it's very elegant having everything stored in one system. Changes in anything propagate to all uh, different process steps and you you have a, a purpose-built uh, SWID library to embed CAD and CAM information in one file. So this is very useful for things like custom cabinetry and mass production and joinery. Uh, the, the, the thing to keep in mind is there's a lot of different people that can show you how to generate a toolpath inside of SOLIDWORKS for woodworking. But the trick is in can those programs actually connect and get the machines to work correctly? Because SWID is optimized for woodworking, they have tight relationships with all the major router manufacturers. They support complicated aggregates and multi-spindled routers so that you can have confidence that your investment is gonna to lead to a seamless uh, connection to the shop floor. So that uh, brings us to the promotion that we have. So if you're interested in learning more, obviously we would uh, connect with you and uh, look at your particular application and machine and show you uh, how we could help you. But right now you can purchase SWID CAM, which is 5,000 US dollars or 65.50 Canadian. And you can receive a 50% discount on SWID design, which is normally $2,500 US per license. So you save 1250 US and that's valid until the end of June. So if you want to learn more about that, please reach out to me. I've got my contact information and cell phone there. 
You also feel free to email if you'd like to uh, give any feedback. Our marketing manager, Jessica, our digital manufacturing manager, Kirsten, and our SWOOD applications engineer, Harpreet. Jessica, I'm going to put it back over to you for Q&A. That's great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we do have a few minutes, about five minutes left for uh, to take some questions here, and we've got a couple in the queue already, so I think we'll go ahead and get started, but uh, if you haven't yet typed your question in, please uh, go for it now. Uh, so the first question that we have here is, does Swood Cam offer nesting reports for the shop floor? Uh, hey Jess, good question. Yes, SwoodCam does offer reports. So it encodes reports for the shop floor that give the operator an overview of the part or the nest that they're cutting. It's going to show all of the parts inside that nest. It's going to show all of the tools that were, are required to cut that part, to cut that sheet. Um, it's going to give you run times as well. It's The report looks really similar to the same report that Harpreet generated for Swood Design. Okay, great. Thanks, Kirsten. Uh, the next question, I, I believe this will also be directed towards you, Kirsten, is fourth and fifth access programming available with the SWIDCAM module? Yep, SWIDCAM offers both four and five axis indexing and simultaneous machining. So for 3D roughing, the mesh calculation is done on solid bodies. And for our 3D finishing operations, the mesh calculation is based on surface bodies. Um, it's very easy to set up inclined planes for indexing and all of our five axis operations are gonna be driven from OP0 or the main machining direction for our spindle. Great, thank you. Uh, Harpreet, I believe this one will be uh, directed towards the design side. Uh, the question is, can I use SolidWorks design library in conjunction with the SWID library to create a frame assembly? Uh, yes, you can totally use it uh, along with your design library as well. Essentially, the idea is uh, with the SWIRT library, you add the SWIRT library components, but if you have other components that you would like to add, you can do so as well. Uh, the only difference being that if you're adding some of your own components and you would like to see them in your final report, uh, then you may have to move to a specific folder where the SWIRT library reside. Uh, but if you don't really care about seeing them in the report, then you're free to add as many components as you like. Okay, great. Uh, the next question is, can I specify a grain direction for a panel? Uh, yes, actually, uh, there is a, another module available in SWORD, uh, SWORD, like SWORD design that lets you control, that lets you tightly control the parameters of the panels itself. So you can control uh, offset uh, for the stock. You can also control the grain direction. You can also specify if your panel is a multi-stock or whether it's a bent panel as well. So you get a very tight control on that side. So yes, it's totally possible to specify grain direction. That's great. Okay, and uh, that's actually it for questions in the queue. Um, as usual, if any questions do arise after we end off here today, don't hesitate to reach out to your account manager. Uh, we've got some contact information up on the screen here. Feel free to, to reach out to us directly, um, or you can always respond to the go-to webinar that you'll receive from us with today's recording. Once again, thank you very much, Chris, Kirsten, and Harpreet for a great presentation. And thank you to all of our attendees for spending a little bit of your Friday afternoon here with us. Please stay safe and stay healthy and have a great weekend. We hope to see you all again very soon. Thank you. Enjoy your Friday. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.